Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of metastatic colonic carcinoma in the liver. And here is the metastatic deposit. And this is the non-neoplastic liver. In this bottom left area, we can see some areas of hemorrhage. Before we look at the metastatic deposit, let's do a quick recap of normal liver histology. This page is taken from our normal histology atlas from PathWeb, which is our free online pathology resource. You can register for free access of the entire resource, including a virtual pathology museum, and the link is in the video description. So the liver is composed of lobules, and within the center of the lobules, we have the central vein, and we have portal tracts at the periphery. Here we can see the hepatocytes that are arranged in this single cell cords or trabeculae, the sinusoidal spaces in between the trabeculae. Here is an example of a portal tract with the artery, the vein, and the bulb duct. Now let's look at our virtual microscopy slide. Here is a rough outline of a hepatic lobule with the central vein, the hepatocytes, and the portal tracts at the periphery. We can see that the hepatocytes are arranged in single cell thick cords or trabeculae, and the hepatocytes are polygonal cells with round nuclei, sometimes prominent nucleoli, as you can see, and very abundant granular eosinophilic cytoplasm. And here is the portal tract. We have the bulb duct, the artery, and the vein, and the reason why colorectal carcinoma metastasizes frequently to the liver is because of the portal venous system, where the veins of the colon drain eventually into the portal vein, and then this finds itself in the liver. So here is the metastatic deposit. On low magnification, we can see that it has a relatively lobulated outline, and it is composed of malignant glands surrounded by a desmoplastic stroma. Let's first look at the glands. The glands are irregularly shaped. Some of them, you can see, are quite angulated. They are not nice and round and regular. And in some areas, we have larger sheets of cells with multiple gland openings. For example, here we have several gland openings, and again here, several gland openings. And these glands share walls. So when we have this punched out appearance of multiple rounded gland openings in a larger rounded structure. This is known as a cribriform architecture. Let's look at another example. Here is another area where we can very clearly see the cribriform architecture composed of these glands that share walls and have these multiple rounded openings. Some of the glands also contain prominent necrotic material, for example here. These are tumor cells that have undergone necrosis and the necrotic cells are seen within the lumina of the glands. And here is another example of these necrotic cells within the glandular lumina. The cells that line the glands appear to be columnar in shape and there is a moderate degree of nuclear pleomorphism we can see that there is a moderate variation in nuclear size, and some of the nuclei are rounder, whereas others are more irregularly shaped. The nuclei also show prominent nucleoli, and you can see an example here. And here is another example. In addition, we can also see scattered mitotic figures. There is a mitotic figure here, another one here. And sometimes the mitotic figures are abnormal mitotic figures, for example, tripolar mitotic figures. And here is an example of a tripolar mitotic figure that somewhat resembles the Mercedes-Benz logo. In addition to these malignant glands, the stroma around them is also abnormal. And this stroma is composed of collagen as well as fibroblasts. So these spindle cells within the stroma with elongated nuclei, these are fibroblasts. And stroma that is around invasive cancer 
often has this very cellular appearance with proliferation of fibroblasts and in addition also infiltration with inflammatory cells. We can see some lymphocytes sitting in the stroma and this stromal reaction is known as stromal desmoplasia. We can also say that the stroma is desmoplastic. There is also a primary adenocarcinoma, a gland-forming malignancy arising in the liver, and this is cholangiocarcinoma, which arises from bowel ducts. How do we know this is metastatic colonic cancer rather than primary cholangiocarcinoma? The morphology is a little bit different. For colorectal carcinoma, usually there is a prominent cribriform architecture that we saw and luminal necrosis. Also, immunohistochemistry can help answer this question. But in addition, a known history or a clinical picture of a colonic tumor with multiple liver nodules also suggests a metastatic colorectal tumor rather than a primary adenocarcinoma. Let's look at an example of a gross specimen of metastatic colorectal carcinoma. And this virtual pathology specimen is also taken from PathWeb in our Virtual Pathology Museum. And here we can see a slice of liver that has multiple metastatic tumor deposits. And there is a separate video describing this gross appearance. You can find it in PathWeb and you can also find it in this YouTube channel. In summary, this is an example of metastatic colonic carcinoma or colorectal carcinoma to the liver and we have the non-neoplastic liver and this is the tumor deposit which is composed of irregular glands with some areas of cribriform architecture. The glands are lined by columnar cells with malignant nuclear features such as nuclear pleomorphism, enlargement, prominent nucleoli, increased mitotic figures, and we can also see areas of necrosis within some of the glandular lumina. And finally, the stroma that surrounds these malignant glands shows desmoplasia in the form of proliferation of the stromal fibroblasts, as well as increased inflammatory cells within the stroma. Thank you.